epic boss fights. How do I even beat this dude? What? Mystical beast. You are beautiful. And wicked things like this. Oh, no, they didn't. Oh, no, they didn't. Oh, they did. Oh, my God. This is Power World. And I spent 100 days on default settings doing everything I could with the goal of unlocking the mystery of the tree. In order to do that, I would need to take down all the bosses. It'll be tough. A major challenge to be sure. In order to do it, I'll need to capture the most legendary of pals. So come along for this adventure because it's one truly not to be missed. Here we go. Day one. Waking up naked on a beach is a pretty common thing these days, so I knew what I had to do. I made my way up the beach through this mysterious stone structure and I headed out into the world in search of, well, clothes. I need clothes. I saw a stick on the ground and I picked it up. Look at that. I didn't even need to punch a tree. Fortunately, I wasn't left to my own devices. I had a handy guide to lead me through this world. With that single stick, I somehow miraculously crafted an entire wooden bench and my eyes were opened to all the magnificent things that I could get my hands on in this world. Ooh, so much stuff. I love this. I spoke to this fellow explorer and was gifted, well, more wood. But I already had a bench, so I crafted myself a wooden bat because the guide wanted me to capture one of these so-called pals. And in order to do that, I needed a way to mercilessly beat this thing into submission so that when I try to force it into one of these magical spheres, it didn't have the strength to resist me. I had to find myself some of the resources needed to craft these spheres, so I tested out my bat on these blue rocks, and I got what I needed. I found my first victim, this poor, helpless, and super cute little chicken. But we slaughter chickens in real life, so this was pretty normal. However, this little guy wasn't just about to run away. He started to fight back. I threw my ball at his face, and I captured my first pal. There was a cute little cat thing right next to him, so I started beating him too. And now I have two slaves. The next cat was not so lucky, as I lost control and I accidentally beat it to death. Oops, sorry bro. I continued familiarizing myself with these cute little critters and how they could help me conquer this island. As night approached, I crafted myself a fire because, well, that's what you do. And I made some food, fried eggs, yum, my favorite. I was cold and hungry throughout the night, so I knew I'd have to get some clothes crafted quickly and a base set up. My guide really wanted me to build a base. Apparently, that's more important than clothes. So, I put my pal box and claimed a base territory. I was delighted to see my pals immediately going to work. Well, look at that. Finding the nearest stone and punching it automatically. Such a good little kitty. But he's pretty slow, and I didn't want to make him do all the work himself. So I got myself some tools of my own, and I started farming some resources. The guide wanted me to capture five lamb balls. That felt a little excessive, but seeing as how useful my cat was, I was thinking maybe I could put them all to work. So I started. But I was still just really trying to familiarize myself with the area and all that it had to offer. I found a couple different resources, ore, which we already know is going to be important because metal is always important. And I took out some of these chickpeas because their meat is delicious. When night came, I once again was freezing. Now I had some cloth, so I could actually make some clothes. I tossed them on, and thankfully, it warmed me right up. My small pal team was already hard at work before the sun even rose. Cativa, crushing rocks, and little lambball carrying them to my storage. These two hard workers definitely deserve some beds. Look at that, they even wanted to build it themselves. I needed them to get a good night's rest so that they could grind their faces off every single day of their lives but they look happy doing it, so I don't really feel bad. These little guys were doing everything. Farming, crafting, transporting. I was seriously impressed and excited to capture more slaves. I mean friends, no employees, not slaves, not slaves. While getting my fifth Lambo for the guide, I spotted one that looked a little beefy. What? Why is it so big? Oh my God, why is that so big? Okay. I definitely need this. He was a lot tougher than his smaller counterparts and could do this. What the hell was that? After being executed by this thing, I woke right back up, went after my stuff, and then hunted this giant fluff ball down. His health was down where you want it to be, and I tossed my sphere and captured myself a shiny lamb ball with a dope lightning attack. As night approached, I continued following my guide. My base needed some things so I could upgrade. Upgrading was a big focus because it allowed me to have more pals working, and they were good, so I wanted as many as I could get. 
I got a bed for myself crafted and more beds for all my pals. Also, a better weapon. I crafted a bow which was a lot better than this pretty useless bat. During the night I saw what must have been some nocturnal pals, and I found one named Daydream. I added him to my team. The morning was upon me, but the night critters were still out and about. I came across this owl looking guy named Hookrates. He was a little tougher, so I used Cattiva to help me out, who is actually a pretty scrappy fighter. But these owls were oddly tough. And that's when I discovered this. Oh no. Oh no, he's crying. Oh my god, this is brutal. Yeah, so if I need a shield, well, sorry, Lamball. But shielding is not all he can do. His rolling attack killed my hoop crates. So I went after to find another one. The spot I chose for my base was no good. It was too small, hilly, and wasted space being near a cliff. So I moved it. I found a really flat land right near the starting point with a beautiful pond and waterfall right next to me. I didn't have a ton of resources yet, but still had to deal with the annoying process of moving all my stuff. And even though I only had two chests placed down, I got raided. What? What is this? What's happening? Bro, I have no, what? I have no defenses. What's going on? I used my bow and my scrappy gang of pals to defend our completely empty base. Not sure what I was even defending, but they did give some good loot. I gave Cattiva a nice pet for doing a good job, but he appeared to be sad. Bro, what's wrong? Turns out he was hungry and I know the feeling. When I'm hungry, I turn into a monster. So I crafted him a feed box and I tossed some bread and berries in there so he could eat. And just like that, he was happy again. Now back to work. I finished moving my base and I crafted up a few basic things as the day was nearing an end. I started getting my essentials down so I could continue upgrading my base. A berry plantation up first. The gardening is so slow. Not something I'll ever do manually, but I didn't have a bunch of farmers yet. Just the chicken, which doesn't do all the processes. I cooked up some food, a shield, and some more spheres before I headed out for more pals. There was a dino sum right near my base, and he looked cool as hell, but a much higher level. I tossed out my lucky lamb ball and went after him. Lamb ball held his own, but I was too weak, and he shredded me. I went back to get my stuff. I didn't even bother going after him. I was way too weak. I'd probably waste all my balls trying to get him. So I just kept exploring. I found myself the Ikethyr Deer. Cool looking deer and an even cooler name, even if I'm not saying it right. I did a bit more exploring, but headed back to base to craft some more. I was still figuring out the mechanics and learning all the different things I could do. So that was pretty much the rest of the day. At night, I found a few more nighttime pals again and tried to capture them. This time, I was able to come away with the hoot crates. I continued progressing my base. As the unlockables became available, I was seeing a need for more and more resources. I crafted myself a logging site to get myself an endless supply of wood, and my brand new deer was perfectly suited for the job. Dude, so this is your life now. I'm so sorry. I put a statue of power so I could upgrade my capture ability in pals, although that was still pretty far ways away. But in order to upgrade my base, I did need one. Then a stone pit. Absolutely love that these mining pits are available. It makes grinding for resources so much easier. I got some other essentials up and running too, like a mill, a crusher, and some workbenches to craft all the things I had available. And I had another visitor from the Dinosum. I was determined this time to catch this one. He came up on my property, so my squad got involved. I figured I'd definitely be able to take him now, but before I could dodge, he hit me and wrecked me once again. I spawned back in and went right after him. Using my bow from a distance to drop his health, I tossed my balls when he was close, but again, he is basically one or two shotting me. So this just isn't going to work, I was just too underpowered. I gave up on him and went after some easier tames near my base. Fox Spart, Pengolet, Goo Moss, and got as many as I could before I ran out of spheres. Just as I started the day, I was greeted with another raid. I had to quickly craft some arrows because I had literally no defenses. But once again, my squad does not take kindly to trespassers, and they wiped out the two exploding birds quickly. Seriously, who needs walls? I headed out to do some more exploring. I came across a bunch of new pals today, and I captured them all. I captured everything I could until I ran into something a bit too high of a level. This Capriti wiped out my deer and I decided to head back home to revive him. 
He was really my best attacker at this point. My lucky handball was a bit too strong and his lightning blast destroyed everything I was going after, so I really needed my deer. I noticed you could go down the stairs when I first started, so I went back down to check out that area quick, and I was delighted to find a cave back here. I didn't even know caves were in this game, so that was really exciting. Except I was still under leveled and I really had no fighters or weapons, so I held off on going there for now. Instead, I just continued leveling up. I noticed early on how much XP you get from catching things, so I made that a big point and caught a bunch, then continued progressing my base. I like how it shows all the things you can unlock early on instead of blacking them out, but it made me really want to level up fast. Some of these saddles and cooler weapons were calling my name, so I built what I needed around my base to progress. I took some time to look over my pals and I was just trying to familiarize myself with all the things they offer. I was seeing the passive abilities and the partner skills that they could use, but before I got too comfortable, another raid. This is crazy. I'm hoping that these don't get too difficult. I wasn't looking to craft a bunch of base defenses. For now, my current pals fended off these raids just fine. But that could change. After a few more levels, I unlocked some new things I wanted to test out. Of course, this was dubbed Pokemon with guns. It was time to use my first gun. But not on me. It was for the monkey. I crafted Tansy's assault rifle and I gave him a test fire. Wow, that's wild, man. That's wild. Also, I tested Celeray's glider ability. Oh, this is dope. I like this. As cool as those two were, it was the Fox Sparks where I really fell in love with these partner abilities. Oh, oh, oh yes. Yes. I mean, how cool is this? And he's so cute, too. This is the exact moment that the game completely stole my heart. This expression on Depresso while mining rocks was also a nice cherry on top. I mean, how brilliant is this? Look how slow he's mining, look how sad he is, and his name's Depresso. It's brilliant. And I continued to be thrilled with the partner skills once I hopped aboard my first mount. Let's go! I discovered you can sleep through the night. It's super handy, but it did mess up how I was tracking these days. Anyways, another raid. Pretty much seems like every time I log in, there is a raid. More dire howls. But this time, I was able to capture one. And after all that happened, another dinosaur showed up. Now that I had some strength, though, it was once again time to capture it. I used Fox Sparks this time, and I lit him up. But my base pals were way too aggressive, and they almost killed him. I got that sphere off just in time, though. And even with a low percent, I was able to capture him. Finally, a new pal? I was pretty excited. I went to find some ore near my base and I ran into this skill fruit tree. It was pretty cool to see that these things just grow on trees and this one was near my base so I was pretty excited about it. When daylight came we went back out to see what else we could find. But we met our match against this Nightwing. I didn't bother going back after it though because flying was still a few levels away. Instead I continued leveling up my base so that I could progress. I headed back out into the world to explore. I had a lot to discover and a lot of pals to capture. Since no flyer yet, I climbed this tower and I got this lift monk effigy. And since I was in the area, I decided, why not take on the boss? I was totally unprepared and I just used what I had on me for exploring to fight it. Let's do this! Let's go, dear. You got this. Uh. Crap. Can't even get him, he's so aggressive. There we go. Ooh, that hurt. I knew I had the advantage by being able to ride around on my speedy deer. But once I hopped off, my deer was no match and he got destroyed. All right, Chickpea, let's see what you got. He's got no chance, does he? He's got no chance, does he? He's doing a little bit of damage. He's doing something. Oh, wow, he's doing it. Let's go, Chickpea. Rip. I tried using these pillars for cover. P 
peeking out and hitting him with my arrows. It was working, but I still had to worry about time. It was Dinosum's turn. But he didn't seem to do all that much. All right, Dinosum, you're just not cutting it. There you go, handball. Didn't do that much, though. Handball, my shiny Lamball did okay, but I really knew what I had to do. My Fox Sparks was the answer. Well, Fox Sparks, you got this. You got this. Time was running out. He only had 1,200 health left. The clock was ticking. I grabbed Fox, ducked out from the corner, and lit him up. We're so close. We're so close. Oh my god, we're so close. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Let's go! Woo! And I gotta say, what a great fight. Not only was it challenging, but it was a lot of fun. And if I had gone in there more prepared, surely it would have been easier. But I was so hyped to continue taking on these bosses because they were a blast. Before heading home, though, I searched the nearby area and I found this encampment with a poor, caged pal. So, well, I set him free, but only to reacquire him now as my property. Sorry, guy, I tried to set you free. When I did eventually get back to base, wouldn't you know it, another raid. Surprise, surprise. It's already starting to get old, honestly, but only because it's a little distracting. But Fox Parks made quick work of them. Today was all about grinding. I had some ore to harvest with my upgraded pickaxe and new things to craft. I farmed some nearby pals, including some water pals to get their pal fluids, and then I started on my sphere bench. These basic level spheres were already getting tough, and I wasn't even going after that high of a level of pals, so I definitely saw the need for upgrades. But also I knew upgrading my capture power would help, so I did that at my statue. Also, I slightly boosted my fox sparks because, well, I was in love. Another day, another raid. You'd think I'd put up some walls by now, but it's probably still gonna be a while. My base was now past level 10 and I had defeated the first tower boss. There was no longer anything to guide me along this journey, and this world was at my fingertips. I set out on my deer with the goal in mind to capture everything. A lot of new pals to discover and places to explore. So I set off, doing just those things. And I came across this nice little town. Who am I kidding? It's a shanty town. You can't even call these buildings buildings. They're really more like shacks. But at least they had some merchants there where I could buy and sell goods and pals. However, there was nothing good that I needed. Maybe I'll come back later. I talked to the townsfolk, but honestly, everyone was pretty freaking useless. I spotted another cave and I figured that's probably the only good thing to come out of this garbage town. I attempted to capture the gossiping villager, but she wasn't having it. I figured this place is so trash, she's probably not even worth wasting my spheres. So I dipped. And then I ran into someone a little more interesting. This black marketeer. Until I saw his selection and thought, oh great, another useless human. I think I'll stick to the pals. One of which I found in another cage. It's Fixie, and she became mine. Night approached and I continued capturing more and more new pals. Back at base, I just kept on testing out some of my new pals and all their abilities. I particularly caught interest in the Dire Howl as a mount. Speedy and quick with decent power. I really liked this guy. And it's a dog. I mean, dogs are awesome. I mean, it's a wolf, but it's a dog. I rode around on my new pet dog and I continued my exploration, capturing every pal I could see. Day 15. At this point I am certain that every time I log in I get raided. This time, fangirls who can't contain their love. Well alright then. They were pretty tough. They even took me out and most my pals. I didn't even come close to capturing one even though I tried. I had a lot more to explore and capture so I went back out into the world. Once again I spotted a cave. Now that I had some decent firepower and defenses, and well, an actual sense of what the hell I was even doing, 
I felt ready and confident to enter my first cave. If I know anything about anything, caves are usually harder, but also rewarding. I entered and immediately discovered some new pals. I captured these new friends and explored the cave. When I reached the cave's boss, it was none other than a giant dire howl. What? Oh, I wonder if I can capture him. Oh my god. And I could. And I did. My very own giant boss, Dire Howl. I was hyped. I said sorry to my Fox Sparks because this just instantly became my new favorite pal. He dropped back home into my pal box, so I continued exploring before I headed home to test him out. I had a bunch of stuff to craft, so I got those processes started back at base, but eventually I busted him out. My new favorite, who I named Good Boy, because he was a very good boy. And after a full day of running around eating all the chickens and lambs for meat, the next day I was ready to boost this pal. I figured he'd be a perfect one to boost stats because, well, I liked him. <laughs> I honestly didn't even bother looking at his stats at this point, I just liked the fact that I had a giant wolf. In addition to soul boosting my good boy, I also gave him some new abilities. I was so hyped about my new good boy, I felt confident enough to take on this Mamorest roaming around annoyingly near my base. But at such a high level, he one shot good boy, and I literally was doing one damage to him. I started to see the importance of being a higher level. There was no way, so I bailed. And my base was growing, and my stuff was growing as much. It was time for some organizing. I had a bunch of storage bins to craft, and I had a bunch of stuff to put in them. So basically that was my whole day. Oh, but don't worry, before the day ended, the routine raid popped in. Anytime I log in, there's just automatically a raid. I got a new pal from it though this time, so I wasn't mad about it. As my base grew, I started getting into the routines of base management. Cooking and crafting, crafting and cooking, and managing these damn pals who never seem to do what you want them to do. Really? Right now? You're gonna go eat right now. Can't finish this first? Okay. Oh, 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 look at that. We get a new helper. All right especially for crafting some bigger tasks, like saddles. I crafted up my Nightwing saddle and took flight for the first time. Always such a great feeling to have wings. The world really opens up now. This Nightwing was quite powerful. I liked his strength, but he was also quite slow. That didn't matter though, because being in the air just felt good. I explored the area until I eventually found myself another alpha pal, the Pen King. I entered his dungeon and I took him on. My Nightwing was outmatched, and Handball couldn't even get a shot at it. Even though I was a higher level, I still got wrecked. I wanted to go back for round two, but my equipment was pretty low, and so I just let my pals heal. So instead, I went back out to find some more. I ran into a Robin Quill, and he was tough. I knew I had to capture one of these, but unfortunately, my Loot Moon killed him. I ran into a few more of these Robin Quill and I desperately wanted one. I put all my efforts toward capturing this much higher level and I was able to snag him after he was near death. And after a struggle with my current spheres, it was once again time to upgrade. But also an upgrade to my weaponry. I came across this crossbow schematic for a slightly improved crossbow and boy oh boy I was happy about it. This was quite an upgrade from the bow, even the triple shot bow, and arrows are actually quite cheap to craft. After repairing my armor and healing my pals, and equipped myself with more firepower, I went back after peeking. I easily took out his assistants, and Robin Quill and Dinosome nearly destroyed him, but not before I tossed out a Gigasphere and brought him home. By the way, Robin Quill was a beast. He was easily my strongest pal at this point. It was about this time I realized how useful these boss level pals are. Capturing or killing them gives the ancient civilization parts which I had been searching for. I wasn't super focused on them before, but now they were a big priority. Chillette was the next one nearby. Just at level 11 he was a pretty easy capture. 
I headed back into the shanty garbage town to take on that cave. The cave felt a little familiar, so I just ran straight to the end, and I found myself a pretty useless fuddler. But I snagged him for his ancient parts anyways. So this gossiping villager told me to tell her about any caves I came across. Well, after doing the cave, I thought maybe she'd give me a reward or something. But nope, she just repeats herself. Useless! I didn't intend to capture any humans, but this person annoyed the crap out of me. So I had to do it. I had to. I put her to work. Maybe she won't be so freaking useless at my base. And she wasn't. She crafted some arrows. Now, I was less mad at her. Good job, you. As the rest of my pals went to bed, I put Robin Quill from my party, and he's actually a pretty solid helper. After getting more of those civilization parts, I was able to get my incubation chamber set up. I popped the egg in there, added some fire to warm it up, and headed to bed, waiting patiently for my first egg to hatch. More raids meant more opportunities to test out my new pals, and Robin Quill really was a beast. Wiping out all these raiders before they even made it to base, he was my champion. While waiting for my egg, I went off into the world for another successful day of capturing pals. Plenty of new pals yet to discover, but I was all about grinding that XP at this point, capturing up to 10 of each pal to max out my gains because there was a lot of stuff I wanted to unlock. My egg hatched me a Rayhound, which is pretty cool looking. I popped back over to the skill tree and was glad to see I had grew some more fruit. I wasn't sure if this was a one-time deal or if I could keep coming back for more of these, and I could, so that's awesome. There were more dinosaurs near my base again, so I went after them. It's great to see my progress here. I struggled so much with these dudes early on, basically one-shotting me in my spheres doing virtually nothing. But I'm much stronger now in every way, and it's a good feeling that this time it was a piece of cake to capture them. Also, in general, it was just getting much easier to capture pals. This Serpent and Broncherry surely would have been much more of a challenge had I gone after them early on. I was making my way through the pal deck and into some of the higher level pals. So I had to make sure to keep upgrading my spheres and my capture power. I hadn't been using it much except for fiber, but the Crusher is low-key like the most useful structure. It's easy to craft and it turns stone into Paldium. Paldium is used for spheres and it gets pretty expensive, but it's also used for the endgame metal, Pal Metal. So access to a ton of it is really important, and the fact that you can basically have an infinite supply as long as you have a stone pit, a good miner, and a good water pal is super convenient. My pals were hard at work, and so was I. Grinding resources, capturing new pals, and of course, managing my brain-dead pals. Vixie, what are you doing? I have one roof, and you get stuck on it. Come here. Mm -hmm. Get back to work. I conquered more caves, found new resources, and collected as many effigies as I could see. It's much easier to see them at night, and flying around on a flyer makes them easy to get to. I hatched this goofy-ass pal, Hang You. Don't let its appearance fool you. According to the description, this mofo is vicious. As a particularly cruel form of execution, serious criminals would be strung up in a public square, and Hang You would tear the skin right from their bones. Holy shit, that's messed up. Yeah, pretty brutal, but it does say his arms can rip apart iron, so I thought he might be able to help me farm iron. That did not work though. I didn't notice that he doesn't even have level one mining capabilities. Oh, well, that's a little misleading. My base was starting to come along nicely. From the start, I didn't plan on putting down floors or walls and just going with an open base concept. The reason is it felt like a waste. I was just trying to be practical with my base design and I didn't care too much how it looked. I love building, but I didn't want to commit half of my 100 days to obsessing over building something because that's what definitely would have happened. So I just wanted a practical base design. I was up to base level 13 by now and I could make two bases. The goal was to find a good metal spot and use my second base as a metal farm. I took note of a resource rich spot while out exploring. Near this desolate church was easily the richest metal spot I had come across so far. Also, it was next to a fast travel, so I could get there easily before I even had my pal box set up. But I crafted a box anyways, and I built my second base. My Peking and Tombats were my only level 2 miners, so I put them to work right away. I worked on getting the rest of the base set up to give them the essentials. I needed a storage box for them to take all the resources, plus a feeding box, some beds, so that they can stay happy and productive, and I wouldn't need to micromanage. When day came, I headed back out into the world and I found myself a Relaxosaurus. 
I saw that you could ride these things with a missile launcher on their saddle, so I was pretty hyped to get this guy. Sadly, the saddle unlocks much later. And then I made my way to my next alpha pal, Fenglope. He was much stronger than I was, but I was up for the challenge. He one-shot my Incineram, and I knew that this was going to be a tough fight. I tried using this narrow cave to my advantage. He couldn't seem to get out and hit me until he shot his acid rain, which was brutal and it wrecked me. I really wanted that attack. I spawned back in and I went right back after him. Of course, his health regenerated, but so were my pals. I went in with the exact same strategy as last time. And when his health was low, I tossed my Gigasphere and I captured what might be the best ground mount in the game. More on that in a second. I checked in on my metal farm and all seemed to be going well, slowly but surely. I needed some adjustments to make it more efficient, but I was really happy with it to start. I loaded my party up with Kativa because they give a 50 weight boost per one you have on you, and I grabbed as much ore as I could to bring back to my main base. I was really looking forward to testing out my Fenglope, but I still had to unlock the saddle. Now that I had the metal farm up though, I worked on improving my farming efficiency. I set up a couple of forges to cook the metal. I unlocked and installed my first PAL condenser. Since I had so many extra PALs at this point, I wanted to start fusing their souls or whatever it is supposed to be doing so that they could power up. I wasn't sure how it would work, but it's a really cool way to boost your PALs. The game kind of forces you to tame a shit ton of these and instead of just having to dump them or sell them all, it gives another purpose to the grind. I love that. I took Nightwing out for another day of capturing pals and collecting everything I could find. Now that I have the condenser, I was literally just capturing everything I saw. Specifically though, I wanted to get my Fox Barks and Dire Howl boosted, so I especially hunted those down. While out exploring, I made my way into another alpha fight. This time, it was Catrice. My squad was pretty well equipped to take her on. Robin Quill was actually too strong for her, so I had to be careful not to kill her. But my trusty flamethrower lowered her health, and I captured Catrice on my first toss. I continued expanding and making my metal farm more efficient. My storage boxes were a little hard to access, so I had to move them. Also, they were too far from my pal box, which is where I transfer back and forth. Really inefficient, so I made some adjustments. Also, I decided to craft my forges over here, so I could just cook the metal here and then bring it back that way. And of course, the pals over here needed beds, a feeding box, and a hot tub. And after a couple days of that, it still was really inefficient because my kindling pals kept falling off this cliff. So I moved the forges down low since they'll probably always fall down here anyways, but another day of hard work. This dude is chilling. I had my van worms and ruby for transporting and cooking and pen kings and tombats for mining and things were pretty set at my metal farm. Back at my main base was my routine raid. More fangirls. This time I really wanted to capture one though. My team lit them up once again, but I was able to sneak a sphere off and I captured my first love ender. I was finally ready to look into the breeding. I had to put my breeding farm down first, which is a pain because this thing is huge and my base is unfortunately in a not so great spot because parts of the circle are blocked by the water and the cliffside. Had I chosen a better spot, I'd have more space. But honestly, this waterfall is dope, and I really like the aesthetics of this spot. But it made space difficult, especially with this oversized breeding farm. So I had to do some moving. I pushed my benches back and rearranged some things, and I made bigger storages to maximize my space. But it did take some time. At the end of the day, I popped over to check my metal farm, and it all seemed to be working as I intended. After a long couple days of remodeling, it was time to get back out into the world. Another new pal, another new alpha fight, the King Paka. Blaze, my Fox Sparks, was already pretty strong, so the Paka was no match. An easy fight, an easy capture. I finally got myself a feed bag crafted, and feeding these pals was getting annoying. My metal farm was in full effect and producing ingots as planned, so I hopped over and grabbed my stash. After finally having enough space, I went ahead and crafted my breeding farm but I didn't have the ingredients needed to make cake yet. I'm still without milk and honey and I didn't have the pals that could farm them. I don't think I had even found the mozzarella yet at this point, so I didn't even know how to get milk. So that was gonna have to wait until I could find some. 
but after actually getting the breeding pen down, I was still struggling for space. So I continued trying to rearrange things to hopefully make more room. I built some floors and pushed my beds back a little to give myself a bit more room. I moved my incubators and farms back too, just to clear out the center area. I knew more things were going to be needed in the future, so I tried leaving as much space as I could. While out hunting more pals, I found myself in an encaged jolt hog Christ with Artisan. The passive skill that boosts work by 50%. I figured he'd be a good one to man my fridge once I get it built. I also was able to get my hands on a boatload of eggs. I was definitely going to need to craft up a couple more incubators soon. I found myself in some new territory and I was coming across more and more pals that I had not seen yet. This was good of course, but I was really trying to find the pals that could produce the milk and honey. But with so many new pals yet to capture, I was getting distracted and sidetracked every two seconds. Yeah. And I didn't actually find what I was looking for, of course. But I discovered another Alpha Pal location, and I entered his dungeon. I started the fight mm. against Quivern with my Robin Quill, as he is still my strongest pal. Once his health was low, I hopped on Good Boy, riding around slowly draining his health with my crossbow. And when it was time, I tossed that Gigasphere. Another Alpha captured. The Quivern had a swift passive. It got me really excited because that adds a 30% speed boost, which is huge. Except I realized his saddle isn't unlocked until much, much later, level 36. But now I had a new top priority because this Nightwing's slow speed was really starting to get tedious flying everywhere. It is really, really slow, and the Van Worm isn't much better. But once I got home, I had so many eggs, I had to get another incubator up. Also, since I had my Jolt Hall Crest, I crafted a cooler box. And I gotta say, this guy literally just sits here doing nothing but cooling this thing. If he didn't look so happy, I'd probably feel a little bad. But he's chillin'. I also used my condenser for the first time and combined my Fox Sparks to give him a nice little boost. I had a ton of stuff to do around my base, so many new things to craft and upgrade, more spheres, more paldium, fibers, cloth, literally everything I could. My pals were hard at work, and so was I. I crafted a generator, even though I didn't need it for anything, but my base upgrades required it. And it was still a priority for me to get my base leveled up until at least 15, where I could unlock three bases. My metal farm was solid, but I did end up doing some hand farming because it's much faster, and I was burning through metal crafting all my stuff. I hatched some more eggs and once again surprised by the pals that I was getting. I started getting a bunch I had never even seen. I realized here how beneficial it is to hatch eggs. I didn't think much of it before, but now when I'm out in the wild, you bet I'm going to be grabbing every single egg that I see. This bird just became my best worker pal pretty much. He'll make cooking metal a lot faster. Some of the crafting times were starting to get pretty long, but also I needed to upgrade my base. So I went ahead and got myself a sphere assembly line built. I headed back out into the world, this time with my van worm, and I ran into Azero, a water boss. Another pretty easy boss to capture, but it's because my level was significantly higher than his by now. I was feeling really good about my current power level. These bosses were going down pretty easy, so I continued hunting them down. Next up was Abushi. I used my Quivern to see what he could do, and with little resistance, Bushi became my pal. When I got out of the dungeon, nearby was some Matsurina. I figured these things must have milk. I'd be baffled and probably mad if the cows weren't the ones that you get the milk from. So sure enough, I captured a few. They dropped milk as a resource, but I assumed I could put it on a farm because it has farming skill, and I was hoping, like the chicken, that it would just drop its milk. Spoilers, it does do that. Weight was becoming an issue. I didn't really want to pump stats into the weight, so instead I crafted a bronze cherry saddle. While equipped, it gives an extra 100 weight, which is pretty significant, 50 more than the cat. And with a full team, that almost doubles my current weight, so I decided I'd just go get some more bronze cherry instead of wasting stat points. At this point, I had a pretty decent buildup of pal souls, so I went to the statue to upgrade. My favorite was Good Boy, so he got the bulk of it. I boosted his attack, defense, max HP, and pretty much used all my souls on him. I was finally leveled up enough to try the Fanglope saddle. So Robin Quill crafted it up for me and I gave Fang a test drive. Whoa, holy crap. 
This dude got mad hops. This is awesome. Holy crap, this is dope. And he's fast too. Let's go. Yes. Yup, I just found my new favorite mount. His mobility was freaking awesome. He wasn't just fast and strong, his double jump was insane. I honestly felt like I'd be able to traverse the world better than with my slow flyers. But I was a little bummed because I just dumped all those points into good boy. And it was looking like he was going to be sidelined as a mount for this guy. Also, I didn't know at the time that you could reset your souls. But nonetheless, Fenglope is legit. After doing some cool 360s with Fenglope, I put him to the test and took on Memorist. Something I have not been able to capture yet because they were too strong. With my hungry Fenglope, I was able to take him down with ease. And the reason hunger is important because if your pal is hungry, their damage is significantly reduced. So, once I got the Memorist, I headed into this cave back at the starter area. I was much higher level this time, so I breezed right through it. I captured the oversized ruby and I headed home. I continued on the endless grind of farming resources and crafting things up, like more spheres. Spheres that I needed if I was going to capture all the pals and all the bosses. I went right on to Petalia next. Fenglope was up again. And he was destroying her, so I hopped on Good Boy to finish her off. Some new pals I was able to get my hands on in the area when I headed out the Hell Zephyr. When I got home, it was nice to see my pals helping each other. When one got injured, another one would carry it to bed. All right, nice teamwork, guys. As my demand for more and more spheres grew, I struggled to get enough stone to grind fast enough to make the Palladium Fragments, or Paldium. I ended up using a bunch of the Rush Roars for mining, but they were not great. I knew I'd need a better solution soon, because all my higher level miners were at my metal farm. After another long day of farming and grinding, I found myself once again at another boss fight. Relaxosaurus Lux. But unlike the past few, this one was a higher level than my pals. I was so obsessed with using Fenglope, I disregarded the fact that I'm using his water moves against an electric type. I just really like his jumping Kamehameha. Robin Quill did most of the work though, and once it was time to throw my spheres, I got a little cocky and he killed me. But Fenglope avenged my death and he finished him off. It counted as a defeat and I got the resources, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted to capture him. Now I had to wait for the timer to reset before I could have another go. But I figured I'd move on to the next one and come back another day. I was, however, trying to capture a bunch of his base versions, the Relaxosaurus. I noticed his saddle has a rocket launcher and I was really looking to get a beefed up Relaxosaurus so that when it came time to use his rocket launcher saddle, he'd be a monster. Not too much later, it was the next challenger, Univolt. I hadn't even seen one of these before, so I was excited to get my hands on it. Once again, I almost let my pal accidentally kill it, but I was able to get that spear out just in time to capture him. I was up to level 33 at this point and I was sitting with a ton of Engram points. I had a bunch of stuff to unlock and test out. It was time to upgrade my armor to heat gear so that I could make my way out to those biomes and start getting more of those dope fire pals. I got my armor done up, but before I went over there, it was time to breed. I had my Ragnarok and Arsox cooking my cake, which takes a stupid long time for just one. For my first egg, I wasn't trying to do anything specific. I didn't even know how the breeding worked exactly. I just wanted to give it a test run. So I grabbed a random male and female and I let them get busy. And it gave me a scorching egg. I tossed it in the incubator and it had about 10 minutes to wait. But I wasn't about to stare at it waiting. I had lots to do. After obsessing over my ground mount's mobility, I figured it'd be a good time to get a faster flyer. I heard tale of an electric bird that could smoke my Nightwing. So I went after the beacon. Once again, I disregarded the fact that Fenglof's moves are pretty much all water based and I was using him against an electric type. But Fang was my G, and I was gonna use him for everything.
It was a pretty tough fight though. I wasn't going to be able to unlock the saddle though, so I had to stick with Nightwing and Feng Lope to do some more exploring. Now that I had my heat gear, I went to the volcano to see what pals I could find. There were new ones I hadn't seen everywhere. Some were just too high level for me though, so I caught the ones that I could. Just be careful here in the volcano because that lava really hurts. Yeah. It was kind of annoying to get my stuff back. I had to craft a new set of armor just to survive the few seconds to go retrieve it. From now on, I'll definitely be keeping a spare. But I was exploring a ton and grabbing a ton of eggs. I discovered an awesome base spot. Perfectly flat, cool area, dope Anubis statue, and a skill tree. I definitely wanted to claim this when I was ready for another base. Once I made it back home, I did some rearranging and crafting. These higher level spheres were starting to get expensive. It took a lot of different ingredients and I had some grinding to do. Also, my first bread egg was finished. I hatched it and I got myself an Incineram, which I already had. My pals seemed to be pretty happy. Their San was doing all right, but in order to progress my base, I needed to build them their upgraded hot spring. So I got that put down. The metal grind had to continue for a portion of the day so I could get myself a weapons assembly crafted. And with those two things, I was finally able to upgrade my base to level 15. This gave me the ability to have 15 pals, which is max based on my settings, and three bases. After discovering that new spot near the volcano, it was kind of my focus to get a base built up out there. Wow. Yeah. I spotted a blaze howl knocked at night and it looked beautiful. I was underpowered but I absolutely needed to at least try to get this one. I wasn't doing very much damage so I invited him up to my base and I called out my pals. But I called out the strong ones and of course they killed him. That was the first one I had seen so I was really hoping these weren't like super rare. I brought some stuff over and I started putting down my beds for this new base spot. But like I said, moving everything was way too much of a task right now, so I held off on that, and I went out to do some more exploring. It was another Alpha Boss, Elphidran. Elphidran. I hadn't used my Univolt yet, so I tossed him out to see what he could do. Elphidran wasn't that tough, though. I was already a higher level than him. When it was low, I hopped on Fang to capture him. And got myself another boss. I was in a newer area too, and so that brought some new pals to capture. And that led me right into my next boss fight, the giant beetle, Warsect. He was a bit tanky, so I tossed out Incineram because he's my best fire type, and Warsect was a grass and ground type. Incineram did some work, I hopped on Feng to get my mobility so that I could run circles around him until one of the spheres eventually caught him. Yeah. yeah. Oh. When I got out of there, I finally found myself some bees. I was going to need them for my cakes, and after all this time, I hadn't seen a single bee yet. So, of course, I had to capture these. But they were honestly kind of tough, and the bee guards explode to defend their queen. I actually found it hard to capture these because I would either kill them, or they would explode. So, unfortunately, I didn't get one. But at least I knew where they can be found. There was still so much to explore, so I spent the day doing that. But... Not on one of my flyers. I was so in love with cruising around on Fenglope and his ridiculous super double jump. So I traversed the world by hoof and I explored a bunch of new areas. My metal farm was pretty decent, but I found it had trouble keeping up with my insane demands. So I found it helpful to spend five minutes here and there just mining stuff manually. Maybe if I get better miners in the future, I won't have to do this. But for now, this was my quickest method. I hatched one of my many eggs, and I was so hyped to get a bee guard. Since I couldn't get one before, it was really lucky. I assigned her to the ranch so she could make honey. I ran around like a madman the rest of the day farming everything I needed to craft a beacon saddle. I really wanted a faster flyer, but I had so many other things to upgrade as well. Finally, I got myself a better forge crafted, and I did some more rearranging. I had this Rep Tyro I hatched from an egg. I tossed him out to help cook my cakes because he's a level 3 kindling. There were a ton of things I needed to craft, so I constantly kept running out of metal, which prevented me from actually crafting the Beacon Saddle. 
but I did get a production assembly line up to make crafting all these freaking resources a bit faster. I fast traveled out to my desert base because there is a good coal spot out here, so I farmed that up quickly, but also I had been continually getting great stuff from these eggs, and there are so many out here in the volcano. I just flew around forever grabbing all the eggs. I spotted the legendary Jetragon, but kept my distance. I was a long way from being able to go after him. I flew out to one of the wildlife sanctuaries and I saw some cool looking pals, but it said criminal activity underway. I literally wasn't doing anything. I guess maybe just trespassing, but everyone was sleeping. So I just looked around and then I headed out to the big tree because honestly, who hasn't tried to come out here? But on my slow ass van worm, it was taking forever. I honestly just Googled it because I was so bored. Can you get to the big tree in Pal World? And the answer was no. So I took a hard right and I went to the snow mountains. Out here once again, I spotted some new pals, but these were much higher. Definitely end game pals. I was nowhere near equipped to be able to go after these. So instead I grabbed the eggs and there were a ton of large and huge frozen eggs. I was very excited to get these hatched. I discovered a new resource as well, some quartz, which I hadn't yet come across. So that was pretty handy. I got back and I stored all my eggs. Only had the two incubators, so I was definitely gonna need more soon because this egg hunting was super beneficial. After a couple days of exploring, it was time to get back to capturing more pals. I discovered another dungeon and I breezed through it. I faced off with a giant dig toys, but Fengloaf being much stronger had no issues taking him down before I captured him. I figured this guy would probably make a good miner, then just up the way the next alpha, but this bronze cherry aqua was quite a bit stronger. I started the fight with Robin Quill so I could pump him full of arrows while Robin Quill launched his seed grenade attack. But even this level 30 was still pretty outmatched to my pals. I used Fenglope to toss sphere after sphere and it actually took a ton, but eventually I got it done. I was feeling pretty unstoppable at this point. My pal squad wasn't facing many challenges, so I sought out something a little higher level. The King of the Forest. Way back when I tried fighting this thing and I did about one damage, but now I was confident that I could take it down. Since it was a higher level, I actually tried using the appropriate element type this time. I tossed out my fire guy, Incineram, to take on this grass mammarist. His partner ability, Flame Claw Hunter, is a nice, powerful fire move. He went toe to toe with the mammarist, and once both their health dropped, I hopped on Fenglope to do his thing. His water attacks won't benefit against the grass type, but he is still strong enough to do some damage. Also, the mobility is so clutch, he's always a good pal to finish them off. But I was trying to capture him. Sphere after sphere, I tossed as many as I had on me. But once again, I was unprepared for the fight. So I ran out. I know my base is close, but these bosses respawn anyways. So I just went ahead and finished him off to claim my trophy and get my resources. After seeing all the cool pals up in the north, it was time to craft some cold gear. I had these thermal undershirts, which I figured could be a nice cold boost to handle even the coldest of temperatures without having to have the best cold armor. I headed back up north to farm some more of that pure quartz. I found a really rich spot, which was near a fast travel point, perfect for quick farming. And I continued to farm other things the rest of the day. I got myself a Mammarest Crist from one of the huge frozen eggs, which was pretty dope because I didn't have one yet. I was having base anxiety once again. That damn breeding farm was just too big. And I was running out of room with a lot of stuff I still wanted to craft. Specifically, I wanted a bunch of egg incubators because hatching these eggs is awesome, but waiting for one at a time is not. So I took some time to rearrange. It was finally time to craft my beacon saddle. Finally time. I cannot believe I had gone this long, but I didn't have that one key item, the electric organ, and I honestly didn't know where to find that many of the electric pals, but I was determined, so I hunted them down, starting with Univolt and then some Sparkets. It didn't take too much time, so eventually I got it crafted up and I took flight. And oh my goodness, it was so much faster. Oh man, this is so nice. It was also pretty strong, so I decided to give it some new abilities, because this was now going to be my main pal. I loaded up some other pals with some new skills as well and boosted my current squad with souls. 
I discovered that you can reset your PAL souls. It just costs a bunch of gold. Finally, I actually found a use for my gold. I don't think I had really needed to purchase anything because most things are easy enough to find in the wild. I headed over to the merchant to make some sales. The only other thing I really needed was bones, which I also purchased. I actually needed a ton of them and farming them in the wild was a bit slow. I guess I didn't know which pal was best for them, so purchasing them just seemed faster. But I needed bones for cement, which was required for a lot of the higher level structures, and of course, more spheres. I set out to do some more exploring on Beacon. I ventured into some newer territories to find newer and higher level pals. When I ran into another boss, Anubis, he was a much higher level than me and all my pals, but I figured why not give him a go. I was really liking Beacon's strength, and I thought I might be able to take him down. But his attack wrecked Beacon, and then wrecked me, and I was way underpowered. I went back for my stuff, but ran for my life after that. I was not ready for that fight. Back at base, I tossed out my best workers, and I continued grinding and crafting. One of my latest additions, the Jormantide Ignis, who I hatched from one of those hundreds of eggs I got from the volcano, was an absolute monster because he had the level for kindling. But I didn't even use it on metal yet. I crafted some charcoal, and it was basically done before I even turned my back. Holy shit, that was fast. It wasn't until the metal where I realized how insane this dude actually is, though. I grinded the day away, and into the next day, eventually making my way to another boss, Verdash, a grass-type pal. So once again, Incineram was up. He took care of business, and I captured Verdash. Conveniently, a new pal was right outside the dungeon, Mossanda. I was particularly interested in him because his saddle had a grenade launcher. And I continued more exploring into parts unknown to me to see what I could find. Beacon made exploration so much easier, and so I took advantage of it. Back home, once again, my egg incubators were proving to be so useful. Another new pal I hadn't even seen yet. Or if I did, well, I didn't have one. I still didn't have a chance to use my fire dragon on metal, but he sure could cook fast. And after a bit of morning grinding at the base, the next boss was on the list. But the levels were getting higher and they were getting tougher to capture. So I flew around for a while first to get some more Lift Monk effigies. And I certainly didn't know it at the time, but apparently these things were useless because there was a bug that made them irrelevant. And I did this all pre-patch. But anyways, it was pretty much something I did anytime I was out and about because I was very much set on maxing out that capture power. Veilette was another grass type, so once again, Incineram was the man for the job. She was actually pretty tough, though. She took down Incineram and Beacon. Fenglope had to finish her off. All right, Fang, you're up. There it is, come on, come on, come on. This is it, this is the one. This is the one, so close, we're so close. Come on. Yup, there it is, let's go. They let the raids continued to happen regularly. I just didn't really pay much mind to them. Eventually I was getting annoyed having to swap out all my workers for more powerful ones though, and then swap them back. If there was a preset to just select the group you want, that'd be really useful. Please add that. But I finally put up some walls. Finally. So Veilette was actually a beast. I ended up putting her in my lineup. I had Beacon, Incineram, Fenglope, Quivern, and Veilette as my team. And I felt pretty powerful. But I knew I'd need to level up even more to take on some of those harder bosses. I continued exploring and capturing things to level up even more. And after some more metal farming, I finally got a chance to use my Jormantide Ignis. There was still so much to do and discover. I got lost in the cycle of exploring the world, hatching eggs, capturing bosses, and then going back, grinding and farming resources to repeat the process over and over.
After mowing down boss after boss with only Wumpo Botan posing any sort of challenge, I knew I was finally ready to take on the next tower boss. I headed up north and entered the tower. Lily and Lilene, another grass type pal. So once again, Incineram started out the fight. I let him do his thing while I stayed a safe distance shooting her with my crossbow, dodging her attacks. Incineram got a good chunk down, but his defenses are pretty weak. I called on Quivern to join the fight, but he was somewhat ineffective against her. So, Fenglope was up next. There we go. No, 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 stay away, stay away. Leave me alone. The movement advantage, his clutch. But while I thought I was safe behind a pillar, she got me with the seed grenade and took out Feng Lo. It was Veilette's turn up next. She hadn't been truly tested yet, but I had confidence that she could get it done. And damn did she get it done. Veilette? Veilette? Let's go? She was going toe to toe with Lily and Lilene and almost finished her off herself. But she got hungry, and her attacks dropped significantly. So I called her back, and I tossed out Beacon to finish the job. Let's go, Beaks. Let's go. Finish her off. Let's go. Come on. We got this. Almost there. Let's go! That fight made me realize how underpowered my character is still. Probably because I'm still using a freaking crossbow. So... First thing the next day was time to upgrade. I unlocked some better weapons, the single shot rifle and the double barrel shotgun and the handgun. I began farming the resources to craft them. And I continued on for a couple busy days of sphere crafting, grinding, weapons and ammo crafting. But the resource grind was nothing in comparison to the XP grind. I had some things I really, really wanted at the higher level like the best cold gear and the Jetragon saddle, which is the fastest mount. But to get there, I needed level 50 and I was barely level 40. I started the grind of capturing the 10 times of each pal for that huge boost, but I stopped short when I reached my next boss, Seabelix. It was an ice type. So once again, Incineram was up. He's still really my only higher level fire pal. She put up a good fight, but my fire type advantage over her ice provided to be too much for her. I headed back out to capture more and more pals, continuing the XP grind. I headed into new territories and spotted new pals, like the Blaze How Knocked. I also made a trip back to capture the boss pals I had previously accidentally killed. The Relaxosaurus Lux, for example. I'll be honest, the XP grind was rough. I had to boost my settings temporarily just to make my life a little bit easier until I was level 48 but I was capturing so many that I filled my pal box and I answered the question to what happens when you do that. Well, they just stay where you caught them. But that also prompted me to find a solution to get rid of them. So in comes the butcher knife. Oh no, they didn't. Oh, they did. Oh my God, brutal. Oh my God, that's so brutal. And it turns out you can actually get resources from doing this. So that means you get them once when you capture them and then once when you butcher them. This was really convenient. 
brutal, but convenient. However, butchering them was a bit too time consuming for my taste. It wasn't really worth it in my opinion. So I headed to the merchant to sell them off instead. So the blaze howl was so badass looking, I had to get a saddle and ride it. But when I started riding around, I was actually quite disappointed. It is incredibly slow and its wings don't do anything, not even a double jump. That was a bummer. I guess I'll be sticking to Fenglope for a ground mount. But hey, he still looks dope as hell. And he was actually pretty strong too. I ended up making him part of my party as a replacement fire pal for Incineram. I was wanting to get more into breeding, but I really needed more space. I ended up not ever completing my third base near the volcano, so I moved it right next door to have a separate breeding base. Once the base was up and the cake was cooked, I had a specific pal in mind. Before I had done this, I just chose at random, but I wanted an Anubis. I caught wind of their ridiculous ability to craft things at crazy speeds, so I grabbed two of my pals that could get me one, my deer and a Pyron Noct. The Pyron Noct had a ferocious and conceited, and the deer had serious, and I'm pretty sure conceited is really the only one that gives you a work benefit, so I probably could have chosen a better selection if I had better ones, but I didn't take the time to look into that. However, once it hatched, it ended up not mattering anyways, because I got super lucky, but we'll get to that. I let the two breed a few times over and over to get as many helpers as I could. I tossed them in the incubator, and my settings were still at default, so it was gonna take a while. While waiting, I had a day full of grinding and crafting. I had another upgrade available. I put down my sphere assembly line too, so that I could get the legendary sphere. I had been hearing whispers of the ultimate farming location, a place with abundant coal and ore. So I set out to investigate, and it turns out it's perfect. I took down my old metal base and I began transferring to this new refined metal haven, but it was no quick process. Mostly because my indecisiveness, I built a platform, then I tore it down. Then I built a different platform, and then I tore it down. Then I built a giant structure, then I tore it down. I honestly was having serious building anxiety, mostly because the building is so primitive and this spot is covered in hills. It was really difficult to build on. I was having trouble coming up with something that I was happy with and that was also practical. And eventually I realized that just wasn't gonna happen. So I settled on basically what I started with, wasting multiple days doing it. But at least through all of that, there was some good news. My Anubises hatched, and somehow I got one with Artisan. The 50% work speed boost. Even though neither of the parents had that passive, I was so hyped. I did not realize that was even a possibility. On top of that, it had conceded, which does add another 20% work speed. This dude was an absolute monster crafter. So I named him Bob the Builder. I tossed out my Reptyro at my new mine because they were my best miners. And honestly, pretty good. They were level 3 and I don't think I even had a level 4 up to now. As I was looking over my base, I was getting more base anxiety. Once again, I did not like how simple it looked and I wanted a little more space. So I did even more remodeling. I was trying to build upward though. I figured there was a bunch of things I could put up on top that the pals don't need access to. Once again, it was a process. I was fighting with the primitive building system mostly, trying to get it to do what I wanted and wasting a lot of time doing so. I had another base upgrade. It was time to unlock the electric furnace, the highest level one, but I needed a ton of poly to do so. I found it best to farm these mammaris, which give five to 10 of the pal oil, which is needed. So I hunted them down and I captured them because if I butcher them back home, I can get double the resources. So I mentioned earlier how sometimes I can lose myself in the building process and that pretty much happened here. From the beginning, I had intended on defeating all the tower bosses in 100 days, but as the days got closer and closer with not even completing my second boss fight, I pretty much just accepted it wasn't going to happen. But then when I spent these last few days unnecessarily reorganizing my base multiple times, I fully accepted that this was not going to happen in 100 days. However, that did not mean I wasn't going to do it at all. I just wasn't going to rush it. 
So, I took my time and I reorganized my base the way I wanted and the way that made it feel and look so much better. Better aesthetically and felt better practically. And let me say, it felt damn good. After finalizing my base design with my breeding farm next door and the goat metal spot set up, I was ready to continue conquering this island. I had my sights on the next tower, but I had to do some prep first. Ammo crafted up for my weapons, which I only had my upgraded crossbow, single shot rifle, and the double barreled shotgun. I had armor to fix up, which I only had the refined metal armor at this point and my Giga Shield, which isn't the highest level shield I could have had either. Obviously, I wasn't fully equipped going into this, but I wasn't level 48 at this point after all that XP grinding, so my confidence was peaking. And my team was pretty stacked. Beacon, Veilet, Incineram, Fenglope, and Quivern. I hadn't upgraded my Blaze Howl yet, so Incineram got that spot. But my arrogant ass completely disregarded the element types and I just started with my favorite, Fenglope, who has water moves against this electric type. Not smart. Fenglope had the movement advantage, but as you would expect, the lightning was way too much for him. So next up was Incineram. I used my single shot and shotgun to pop off hits every chance I could get, but he was ruthless coming after me and just lighting me up with his lightning blast. Before I could even get out my strongest pal, Veilette, he wrecked me and I, was humble. But that wasn't going to stop me from trying again. I had some repairs and ammo replenishing to do. I also upgraded my shield to the next level shield, the best one I could get, and a better weapon, the assault rifle. My squad was decent, but I decided to make some adjustments. I spent my gold to reset the stats and I poured souls into my new lineup. Beacon, Fenglo, Blaze Howl Knocked, Sibilex, and Incineram. I also had a ton of Incineram, so I boosted him with the PAL condenser, but I had a major brain lapse. And for some reason, I thought water was the advantage. So I went ahead and I dumped a bunch of my water skills into my new squad. And well, water is weak to electric, so I was going in at a major disadvantage. I started out with Incineram again. He's been my trusty pal so far. But I had to switch to my new guy Blaze Howell to see what he could do early on. And he was putting in some pretty good work. Even his water attacks were doing some decent damage. But the real gem of this fight was the assault rifle, surprisingly. Damn, this thing puts out damage. I didn't bring that much ammo though, so I tried to stay alive and let my pals do most of the work. Getting in shots when I could with that and my shotgun. Three minutes in and Blaze Howl was taking a beating. The boss's health was down to just 100,000 of the 130. I tossed out Fenglok to continue the fight. He was staying strong, but time was running low and he just wasn't putting out enough damage. I was past halfway and not even halfway on the damage. I threw out Beacon, hoping he would be stronger. But in the moment, for some reason, I was still disregarding the element type and his electric moves were ineffective against a fellow electric type. Sibelix was up next. I didn't even think about it, but she was an ice type fighting a dragon type, so her moves were highly effective, and her partner ability did massive damage. But it was too little too late. I got down to one minute left, and I still had over 40,000 left to go. I knew it wasn't going to happen, but I continued to fight until the very last second. Well, that's all she wrote. Well, that sucked. I mean, the whole 100 days experience was amazing, but talk about an anticlimactic finish. I can't believe my dumb brain completely messed up the element types and their advantages. I didn't even have the realization mid fight. It wasn't until it was all over when I was like, wait a minute. And I finally realized how dumb I was for going in with water moves. Nonetheless, I had a blast in these 100 days, so much so that there was no way I was not going to continue. I had legendaries to tame. And more bosses to conquer. And, well, I really wanted one of these. Which is why I did another 100 days. 
And if you're watching this and part two isn't out yet, oh, it will be soon. So I'll see you on the next one. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day and thank you for watching. Peace.